I used to think for years that maybe I was the only one that noticed that WWE had a kind of prejudice or racist problem in the way that they treated especially their black performers and then maybe to a slightly lesser degree Asian wrestlers and then to a lesser degree their Hispanic or Mexican wrestlers. Um, so when I started doing videos on here a few years ago on YouTube, I started hammering away at this and talking about this because to me I think it is a very real issue. And I know I'm not the only one that sees it this way, and I'm not the only one that thinks that this is a problem for the WWE. So it warmed my heart last week to see The Atlantic do an article talking about while WWE um, might be fake, their problem with prejudice and racism in their organization is very real. And it is very real. I think you have to be living under a rock or in an alternate universe to sit there and think that the WWE doesn't have a problem with prejudice or racism towards their non-white performers, or I guess you'd say non-Samoans, because they love their freaking Samoans. You know, I guess if you're a black guy or a Hispanic or an Asian in the WWE, tell Vince McMahon you're Samoan and you'll get pushed to the fucking moon. But tell them you're a black guy from the inner city. Oh, good fucking Christ. Good luck to you. You look at their use of stereotypical gimmicks over the years. I don't even need to repeat them because they're so numerous and so obvious to so many of you. What I don't get is why the WWE thinks this is a good idea. It shows to me just how disconnected they are from reality. It shows to me just how isolated they are from the reality of today's world. And it also shows me that the WWE doesn't understand how this racism is ultimately bad for their business. I felt for years that the WWE is indeed very disconnected from reality, especially, especially when it comes to their treatment of their black and non-white wrestlers in their company. The prejudice and flat-out racism shown towards these performers, towards these athletes, entertainers, is astounding to me because it shows just how to, out of touch WWE is with the reality of the world today. There's this prevalent belief, I think, carried by a lot of wrestling fans and by the wrestling business and especially the WWE as a whole, that if you had too many non-whites at the top, that this would be a bad thing for the business and that the WWE's fan base, especially here domestically, is predominantly white. They predominantly fear God and they love their guns and they love their NASCAR and their rednecks and their Southern. And this whole notion is outdated and completely ludicrous. Let's think about it this way for a second. When you look at the WWE, they're a brand that says out front, you know, they don't hide the fact that they're predetermined, they're scripted entertainment, but they still try to establish themselves as being as legitimate of an entity as they possibly can, especially when they're ultimately built around the athleticism of the in-ring aspect, the in-ring competition of the sport. But yet when you sit there and you look in the landscape of American sports today, you go watch track and field. It's dominated by Jamaican and American black sprinters and African distance runners. You watch the NFL, which is dominated with the exception of maybe the quarterback position, even though that's slowly starting to change, by the black athlete. You look at the NBA. It's definitely dominated by the black athlete and foreign-born non-American players. Do people not watch those sports? Do people sit there and tune them out because they say, hey, there's too many darks here for me. There's not enough honkies there for me to watch. No, this is ridiculous and this is stupid. Look at the massive numbers the Olympics do every four years, and it's not just because of the Olympics, it's because of the athletes. Do you think people tune in to watch the 100 meters and sit there and get pissed off and disappointed because there's no white guys in there? No, they know it going in. Do you think people sit there and get frustrated at the NFL because there's not enough white guys in there? No, there's still plenty of white talents and white stars in there. But you've got something for everybody. You've got something for more of your fan bases. And again, this whole notion that the WWE has a predominant white fan base in this country, I assure you, is completely and utterly, totally ridiculous. Ridiculous. So why would you sit there and continue to perpetuate a cycle that disconnects you from the sporting reality of this country, and it has been for years. The American sporting landscape is dominated by the black athlete, yet when you turn on WWE, it is dominated by the white athlete. And this fear and this notion that a non-white star is bad for the WWE and that fans would turn away in great droves if you had a black guy or a non-white guy at the top, 
Well, what about The Rock? You know, I always classify him, him as Samoan, not black, because he classifies himself as Samoan, not black. But when he was at the top, wasn't that the best period of business for the WWE? What about guys like Booker T and Mark Henry when you made them just WWE World Heavyweight Champions? Was that a bad thing for business or was that a good thing for business? Did that drive people away in great droves? No, the freaking hell it didn't. Did Rey Mysterio drive people away in great droves? No, the fuck he didn't. Eddie Guerrero sure the hell didn't. So again, this whole notion that the WWE's fan base, because they're so predominantly white, would get so offended with having so many different you know, freaking stars at the top that weren't white is completely and totally ridiculous. You're going to tell me that all these wrestling fans just watch NASCAR and that's it? That's stupid. A lot of them watch the NFL. A lot of them watch the NBA. And they sure as hell don't stop watching just because their sports dominated by the black athlete. And again, not only is this disconnect sitting there and really establishing that the WWE is not to be taken legitimately, it's also not based on reality, and it really is bad for business, and let me tell you why. Let's look at this from a population standpoint, a demographic standpoint, to just really hammer home the point how off the WWE is on this, how disconnected from reality they truly are, and how bad they are killing their overall business with this perpetual cycle of prejudice and flat-out racism towards their non-white performers. Look at the top 10 American cities in terms of population. I'll read them off. It's New York. It's L.A. It's Chicago. It's what? Houston, Philadelphia. I think it's Phoenix, San Antonio, San Diego, Dallas, and San Jose. So obviously a couple of them in California, a couple of them in Texas. These are the top 10 most populous cities in the United States, several of which are cities that the WWE likes to go to at least a couple times every year. Not a single one of those top 10 cities has a majority white population. What I mean by majority is that 50% or more of the total population of that city would be classified as white or Caucasian, if you will. Not a single fucking one of the 10 biggest markets, 10 biggest cities in terms of population in this country has a majority white population. So you're going to sit there and tell me that it's bad for business to have a bunch of non-white wrestlers at the top, that you would drive away a lot of white fans, whereas in the top 10 cities alone, not a single fucking one of them has a majority white population. And I've got some news for the WWE. If you think white people are the largest share of your fan base, then you are just as out of touch with reality as the Republican Party is with political demographics in this country today. White people are not the majority anymore. They might be a plurality. They're not the majority, especially when it comes to your business, I promise you. You've got a lot more black fans than you realize. You've got a lot more Hispanic fans than you realize. You've got a lot fewer white fans than you think and realize. And then we get to this whole notion of, well, the WWE, you can sit there and say that about those top 10 cities and populations like Daddy, but what does that really mean? Again, several of those cities you know, are cities that the WWE loves to go to. They love to go to New York and L.A. and Chicago and Philadelphia and Houston and Dallas and San Antonio and San Diego. You know, you could actually make an argument for Phoenix and San Jose as well. They love going to all 10 of those cities. So those 10 biggest cities, not a single one of them is, has a dominant white population. Not a single one of them has a white population that is more than 50% of the total population. So again, this whole notion... That this fan base wouldn't want non-white stars just shows that the WWE themselves doesn't understand the demographics of the places that they go to. They don't understand their own demographics of their own fucking fan base. Look at some of these other cities that the WWE loves to go to. And we talk about the ridiculousness of some of these notions, especially about how all these wrestling fans are Southern and rednecks and Republicans and conservatives. And you go on and on. We know the stereotypes. Boston, D.C., Minneapolis, Cleveland, Baltimore, Detroit, St. Louis, Miami, Atlanta, Las Vegas, Milwaukee, and Seattle. Now, this whole fear that wrestling fans are predominantly, you know, NASCAR loving and white, again, is ridiculous and stupid. And the WWE, these are 12 cities that I think all of you will acknowledge. All of you will acknowledge that the WWE loves to go to at least once or a couple of times every year. 
So this whole notion that these cities would rebel against non-white stars is completely ridiculous. All 12 of these cities that I named voted, and in some cases voted in huge numbers, for Barack Obama in 2012. And probably in even bigger numbers in 2008. So you're going to tell me, WWE, that all 12 of these cities that broke very heavily for Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012, a biracial man, mind you, would rebel and be in an uproar if they saw a few black guys at the top of WWE. How ridiculous is this? And when you think about it, out of those 12 cities that I named, only two of them are white majority cities where whites constitute more than 50% of the population, and that is Minneapolis and Seattle. And do you really associate a Seattle with being a redneck, NASCAR-loving type of area? I don't think so. You know, even Minneapolis, you know, people that haven't been there maybe don't understand the, the breakdown in the demographics of that city. D.C., Cleveland, Baltimore, Detroit, St. Louis, Miami, Boston, Atlanta, Las Vegas, Milwaukee. Non-white is the majority. In a lot of cases, the white population is not even the plurality. So when you look at these cities, and look at cities like Boston and D.C., and if you've ever been to one of those cities, or you look at a place like a freaking Cleveland, or you go to Baltimore or Detroit or St. Louis, would you describe those as predominantly white NASCAR-loving areas? No, the fuck you wouldn't. So how can WWE possibly determine, based off of the demographics of the areas that they actually freaking go to, that the utilization of these minority stereotypes, the lack of utilization of black talents in their company as a whole, and at the top especially, is in any way, shape, or form good for business. It shows to me that the WWE is truly disconnected from the sporting reality of today's times here in this country. It also shows me that the WWE has a clear and utter total lack of understanding of the demographics of the fucking cities that they go to to work their house shows, their live events, their pay-per-views, their television tapings. The top 10 cities in this country in population, not a single one of them has a white majority. But yet you think always putting white guys at the top is best for business. It seems like the WWE thinks that Hispanics and especially black people and black families don't have televisions to be able to watch their product. Again, I assure you, this is a stupid, ludicrous, and ridiculous notion. And then when you look at the other cities again that the WWE loves to go to, like the Bostons, the DCs, the Clevelands, the Minneapolises, Miamis, Atlantas, and all of this... All 12 of these cities voted for Barack Obama in 2008 and then again in 2012. Only Minneapolis and Seattle, Seattle, excuse me, out of those 12 cities have a majority white population. Yet you're going to sit there and tell me that these populations, these cities would be off put by seeing several black and Hispanic and Asian wrestlers at the fucking top. Give me a fucking break. Until WWE wakes up and realizes that they have a problem. Until the WWE wakes up and realizes that they have created a huge problem in terms of credibility and respectability, nothing's going to change. Until the WWE realizes that occasionally some black kids and some Hispanic kids and some Asian kids would like to see somebody like them actually do well and not be see, seen to be perpetuating the same societal stereotypes that are so often done in our music and other forms of pop culture, the WWE business is not going to grow and is not going to improve. The WWE needs to stop acting like the fucking Republican Party in this country. They need to understand that sitting there and assuming that the white man is the way to go forever is the wrong fucking way to go. All you're doing is alienating a growing segment of the overall population, thereby dwindling the overall customer base that you could draw from, which is ultimately what ding-dong dumb dicks bad for business.